Hi, thank you for joining us today. This is Dina at Remnant Nation Radio and NewWinePouring.com. Welcome to Remnant Nation Radio and NewWinePouring.com. Remnant Nation Radio is a prophetic and poetic view of the sojourning bride of Christ in the world today. Thank you, Father. Well, I listened to a podcast the other day, and I was reminded how much of a blessing it was to hear and listen. Sometimes just listening to people pray for you and cover certain things that even are going on in your life that you don't even know, the person that's doing the podcasting, or uh, you know, you might be listening to a CD or an old tape or whatever it is, and they begin to minister by the Spirit of God. And some things touch your life immediately, just really just get right into the place where you're at. And then other things, maybe not so much, but you know somebody that it is. And you can come together in agreement, is what I'm getting at. You can come together in agreement with those that are praying, uh, using media to pray for you. And when you do that, God will bring you into a very special blessing because you're putting out your faith. Whatever measure of faith that you put out there, whether it be a teaspoonful or a cupful or everything that you have and you're taking it and grasping that which God has for you and maybe even more than you thought that he had for you and you're going to take it. Uh, When you reach out with your faith, the Lord is not going to disappoint you. He said when you lack anything, when we lack wisdom, he says, Ask of God, and he will give you that which you ask. He will not disappoint you with a a rock or a stone. He's not going to disappoint you with something that is not valuable to you. He's going to meet your need and your desire and the cry of your heart. So I want to dedicate this time, this podcast, uh, and mingle it with uh, sharing and prayer and ministry, whatever the Holy Spirit wants to minister to anyone that is listening right now. And just put your faith out there. Just say, Lord, I receive everything you have for me in this audio as I'm listening, as as I'm listening to this podcast. Whatever is mine, I reach out for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. So, Father God, I, I pray for everyone that is listening to this Lord, in Jesus' name, you know who they are. You know what they've been going through. You know what they've gone through in life. Father, you know what they have lost that needs to be recovered. I thank you, Lord, that your word says when the enemy has stolen, that he will restore seven times. And so, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that the darkness that has stolen so much from so many people even those that are listening right now that has suffered loss. Father, I thank you, Lord, that that devil, that darkness, that operation in the mighty name of Jesus to still kill and destroy will restore back, will let go of everything that's been taken, and it will come back seven times greater, seven times better in Jesus' name. Lord, a blessing attached to it. Father, we forgive who needs to be forgiven. We release who needs to be released. Father, you said in your word to forgive, forgive those that have trespassed against us. And so in every way that we have been trespassed against, stolen from by people, Lord God, we forgive. We know that we cannot harbor unforgiveness. We cannot harbor bitterness because you're stolen from once by any way or that or capacity that that might be and then the bitterness and the resentment and the hurt and the anger and the unforgiveness that comes out of that stills from us more it takes from us our peace it robs from us our sense of um, wellness and it takes it causes sickness in our body if it's able to go on 
it hurts other people too because like the scripture says that to not allow get rid of bitterness let not a root of bitterness spring up whereby it defiles many a root of bitterness within you don't let it just spring up because it will bitterness will spring up out of you at times you never even expected all of a sudden somebody strikes a note hits a tone says something that reminds you or triggers you in a memory and uh, or you may be holding or harboring unforgiveness towards that person and then there it goes and that root of bitterness something just springs up and latches itself onto someone unexpectedly and a barb comes out what I mean by a barb is a hurtful word comes out something is said a snide remark we've all done it we've all been guilty of doing it we have to um, acknowledge that but it happens and where does it come from it comes from a root of bitterness and so something that happened to us that we didn't let go of something we didn't forgive then it comes out and it strikes and so it just keeps going we've got to ask the Lord to heal us to deliver us we need to forgive we just do this as an act of our will Lord I forgive I let this thing go. I know I don't feel like I want to forgive, but I know it's best for me and it's best for them and it's best for your plan. It's what you want. This is how we know we're Christians. This is how we know we're Christians because we begin to bear fruit in areas where there's been hurt, there's been wound, there's been regret, there's been disappointment, there's been mistakes. We've all made mistakes. We can't want God to forgive us and not be willing to forgive others. So, Lord, in Jesus' name, those roots of bitterness right now, I pray that they dissolve. I pray, God, that the word that was just released just now will go into the deep depths of their soul, our soul, my soul, even as I speak, in the name of Jesus and wash out, wash out everything, every hurt and every kind of harm that bitterness has caused or unforgiveness. We forgive those that have trespassed against us. We thank you, Father. You give us the capacity to love beyond what we could possibly imagine or think that your love is shed abroad in our heart. We can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens us, no matter how damaging the, the uh, attack against us, no matter how damaging a word spoken against us was. Um, what something that's happened to our family, something that was too hard to take, something that changed everything, and now all we're left with is bitterness. Lord, help us. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. Wash out the memory of it. Wash out all the residue of it, the lingering pain, the unforgiveness, the bitterness, resentment. Thank you for it. Now, I loose right now just the angels of God, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, and His holy angels working on your behalf because you're an heir to salvation and God wants you to be healthy and whole, mind, body, and soul. So I loose the power of God that you will have the capacity to love like you've loved before, but even more so before this thing happened to you, before this pain struck you from wherever it came from, whatever circumstance, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would be restored. And I loose now restoration, the restoration anointing that breaks the yoke, that those things that keep us in bondage. I just loose the power of God because you know these things oftentimes are the root of addictions. They're the root of illnesses. Sometimes cancer is even agitated or uh, just because of our frame of mind, how we feel over the years. And so we just lose the power of God to come in, to flow, and to pour out upon you His grace, His mercy, His enablement, that you'll be enabled by God to do what is impossible for men to do. What is impossible for men to do is impossible for men to do, but what's possible for God to do is possible for God to do. He can do all things. 
We can do all things. He desires to make us whole. So I just speak to you right now in Jesus' name, be made whole. And every kind of illness, every kind of disturbance in your soul, thank you, Father, mighty God, every kind of disturbance, it has to go. And I loose peace. Christ in us, the hope and glory. And if you've never received Christ and you're listening to this and you've, for whatever reason, turned on this podcast and you've been attracted to the things of God, you've thought about Him, you've asked, and and maybe even you've prayed for the first time in your life, I want to give you a chance to say yes to the Lord. And that's all it takes. God gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life you have a soul you have a spirit your soul lives in the body and that's your consciousness that's your mind will and emotions that's the person you are the thumbprint the fingerprint of eternity is your soul who you are your identity really the body is just the coat that someday will be taken off. And the Bible says that absent from the body is present with the Lord, but we've got to make sure that we're ready to meet him. The spirit of man returns to God who gave it when we are separated from our body and our body dies. That's the first death. There's a second death that the Bible talks about. That second death is eternal separation from God and everything that God is. He is love, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. We don't want to be separated from the light and the love and the peace and the power of the presence of God and His glory. Everything that's beautiful on this earth is a reflection of His glory. We don't want to be separated from that for eternity. We do not want to be separated from that. So when we accept Christ and we say yes to Him, then we say yes to the bridge that we're supposed to walk over. God designed this bridge We were separated from God. He's our righteousness. Our own righteousness isn't good enough. The Bible says our righteousness is as filthy, dirty rags. But his kind of righteousness that we accept, when we accept Jesus, the Bible says we put on the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. In in other words, he gives us this pure new garment when we say yes to the Lord. I want to be a part of your kingdom. I want to become a citizen of the kingdom of God. And so we just say, Lord, I ask forgiveness for doing it my way. I want to do it your way now. And I want to put my hand in your hand. And I want you to lead me for the rest of my life into your presence. I want to know you more. I want you to teach me how to walk with you, how to live for you. When we pray that, when we do that with all earnestness, then he receives it. And so this is like walking across that bridge who is the Lord Jesus Christ that made a way. He said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man goes to the Father except by me. So we cross this bridge called Jesus, the Lord, the bridge, our salvation. When we do that, that we're allowed to enter into the presence of God. And so we enter by grace. It's not by works. We can't do it all good enough, right enough, complete enough to deserve heaven, to deserve the presence of God. We can't, but Jesus did. He did everything that he needed to do to make sure that he could win mankind back to the Father, to bring us back to him. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Holy one, holy one, holy one. Korabashuta mahitalabahaya. Thank you for it, Lord. No, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, every kind of illness, you said you sent your word and you healed them and delivered them from destruction, Father. Lord God, I pray for those that need healing in their bodies. Father, from the top of their heads right down to the sole of their feet, I loose your power. I loose your power, your healing power. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Father, in Jesus' name, every kind of sickness, every kind of disease. Thank you for it, Father, mighty King. 
King of kings, Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, Lord, right now, healing, merciful God. Thank you, Father, mighty King. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you that you sent your word and you healed them. Blessed be the Lord God that forgives us of all of our sins and heals us of all of our diseases as much as he has forgiven all of our sins. He has healed us, past tense. He has already healed us. The cross, when he was on the cross, by his stripes we were healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've all gone our own way. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised by our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, through his stripes, we were healed. So when he took that punishment on the cross for all of mankind, he won salvation and he obtained healing by his stripes. The wounds on his back. Glory be to God. By his stripes we were healed. Before we were even born, he provided. He made provision for us. Before he was, before we were even born. And so all we have to do is receive that and say, I receive the provision of God for my healing. And whatever that thing is that you need, just speak it out right now. Just speak it out right now. You know, sometimes we have to, to do something as an act of faith, showing God that we believe. Did you know that asking the Lord to heal you takes faith? For you to even form those words in your mouth and speak them to him is an act of faith. You're saying you want the Lord to heal you. Well, you wouldn't ask that if you didn't believe. So you don't knock on a door unless you believe someone's in there. Right? Glory be to God. So, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened. That takes faith. Because you believe that someone's in that house, you're going to knock on the door. If you think it's empty, why are, are you going to knock? You're not going to knock. These are acts of faith. So just by the, the fact, just by asking is an act of faith. And so, think about that. Whenever you go to the Father... You want to talk to him about anything that you have a need and you want. It's a pressing need and you want to talk to him about it. And you begin to share with him and talk to the Lord about how you're feeling or what it is that you, you need that you want to see happen in your life. That is an act of faith. A lot of times people struggle and think, well, maybe I don't have enough of faith. Well, the fact that you are even asking is an act of faith. So... When a minister or someone that's ministering or preaching or teaching and they say, come forward and receive your healing. Well, when that gives you an opportunity to do something that is an act of faith, because when you come forward and walk up to receive your healing, or you go to the elders and ask for prayer, that's an act of faith. Because if you didn't believe that you could be healed, you wouldn't ask the elders to pray for you. That's an act of faith. You wouldn't go up to the front where someone's ministering to have hands laid on you if you really didn't believe. So that's why sometimes you're given instructions so that you get an opportunity to respond to those instructions, proving to yourself that you do have faith. And so my instruction to you right now is to just lift up your hands. Lift up your hands to the Lord. Lift up your hands to the Lord and receive from Him everything that He has for you today. And all you have to say is, Lord, yes, I receive from you everything that you have for me today. Every wisdom, every word, every ability, everything that I have need of to fulfill this day successfully, leaving no stone unturned, that everything that you've meant for me to receive from you today, that I receive it, that I'll have it in Jesus' name. Just lift up your hand and say, Lord, I receive 
And I come together in agreement with this prayer that I'm listening to right now, all of it that pertains to me and all that, that you want me to have. I accept it. And I accept the fact that you came, that whosoever believes upon you, whosoever. And so I am that whosoever, and I believe upon you and whatsoever you desire for me. And I recognize that you already did all the work. You said, Jesus said, it is finished on the cross. My healing, my salvation, to be made whole, to have the mind of Christ, to walk in peace, to bear fruit, and that my fruit remain. I receive that and everything I need today in order to see all of that come to pass in my life. In Jesus' name, so you lift up your hands. Say, Lord, I receive from you. This is my act of faith right now. The Lord will honor that. He will honor that. Glory be to God. Because you wouldn't lift up your hand and say, yes, Lord, I receive, unless you believed. It's that simple. So that's why sometimes, you know, when Jesus said, to whomever he was praying for, uh, go wash yourself in the river or uh, go tell or, you know, go tell your servant. When you read about Jesus ministering, you will see sometimes he gives instructions. He gave specific instructions. He did specific things. And we don't know why, but it has to do with triggering faith on the inside of people. When we respond to the Lord and do what he tells us to do, or whoever he's using, and they say, let's bow our heads and pray. And so when we do that, as we're bowing our heads pray. Well, why do we need to do that? It's just an act of faith. If you didn't believe that God would hear your prayer, then any instruction that you were given to go into that prayer, you wouldn't even respond to it. But people that humble themselves before the Lord, he said, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. You know that song? Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up higher and higher, and he will lift you up. Never mind my singing, but humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. These are different ways that you can humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus mighty king, to receive from him these little things that are acts of faith. When we go into our prayer closet, that's an act of faith because we're positioning ourselves to begin to communicate with God. We wouldn't do that if we didn't believe that we were going to meet with him. So we need to kind of chill out about this thing about faith and and some of the struggle people have when they think that, oh, I gotta really have faith. I gotta believe that God's gonna hear me. And, you know, and, but let's talk about faith for a minute. Faith cometh not, faith cometh not but by hearing and hearing the Word of God. And so when we read the Word of God, we read about its faithfulness in the Book of Life, the Bible, the Scriptures. We read how faithful He was his plans, his pursuits, his purposes in the Old Testament, the things how he wrought out his purposes and uh, how things worked out for David, how things worked out for what God did with Jeremiah, Ezekiel, the prophecies, the stories, the first kings, second kings, the stories of the kings, Esther, Ruth, 
Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, the story, the life and times of Israel. And we see the faithfulness of God. We see his love. We see his patience. And his persistent towards us. Faith comes not but by hearing. And that by hearing the word of God. And then there's another scripture that says, build up your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. This is why that when we pray in the Spirit, we're building up our most holy faith. Is God a respect of persons? Does he desire one person to not have so much faith in another person to have great faith? Well, sometimes our faith depends on us by doing the things he says to do to build up our most holy faith by hearing and hearing the word of God, by listening to his anointed preaching, teaching, and his anointed ministry and getting into the word getting into the word, getting into the word, and praying, building up our most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in our prayer language builds up our faith. And God's no respecter of persons. And so if praying in the Holy Ghost builds up our faith, then everybody should have the capacity to pray in the Holy Ghost because everybody should have their faith built up. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty King. Mighty King. Mighty King. So I want to pray for struggles. I want to pray for those that have struggles. Mental, emotional, physical. I want to pray for those that have economic struggles. All your life, you've dealt with poverty. All your life, you've never had enough. All your life, it's been hard. And so we do sometimes need to persevere and wait on the Lord and trust in Him. Put our whole reliance upon Him. He loves us. He wants us to rely upon Him. Not upon man. Not upon the economy of this world. Not upon the government. The merciful God that he is, is he teaches his children how to trust in him. So a lot of times when we go through these times, it's because he is teaching us to rely upon him. But sometimes, a lot of times, there is demonic activity. And so we have a need. We have something that we're waiting on the Lord for, and we're waiting and we're waiting, and it's not coming through. Well, he is El Shaddai. The God that is more than enough. And he provides for us. The provision, in fact, the this, this scripture says, the provision has been made. He's already made provision for our healing. He's already made provision for our prosperity in him. The true prosperity that he has called all his children to walk in. No matter what you see, no matter what you feel, when you know you're going to have what you need when you need it, that is prosperity because he has a thousand cattle on a thousand hills. He owns this world. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It belongs to him. And he said, Jesus said, pray like this, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread. Okay? Give us each day our daily bread. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside the still water. Why is it the still water? Running water can carry you away. But the still water is a place where you can soak up the still water, the provision of God that quenches your thirst in a peaceful environment. This is the purpose of God. This is the will of God for our lives. No matter what circumstance we're in, we can be in a state of mind where we are by those still waters. We can have chaos all around us. We can be 
in the middle of Katrina and still have the peace of God. We can be in the middle of World War III and still have the peace and the presence of God. Psalm 91. He that dwelleth, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. A thousand may fall at thy left hand, and it shall not come nigh unto you. And I have good news for you. Even if it drops right on your head, you're getting blown right into the presence of Almighty God. You will not taste the sting of death. Jesus said, Death, where is thy sting? Jesus took the sting out of death. Absent from the body is present with the Lord. Fear not for I am with you. He never leaves us. Christ in us, the hope of glory, is living on the inside of us. And when we depart from this world, however that may be, before, during, and after, he is with us. And he is in us and we are in him. We cannot be separated from him. So, Psalm 91 says, He that dwelt in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Okay? Well, we've got to obey God and be where He wants us to be when He wants us to be there. If we have to go out into exile, grab our uh, sleeping bags and walk out into exile, walk out into the desert, if that's where He's leading us, He'll lead us beside still waters. He'll take us where we need to go. Sometimes we need to stay where we're at. Sometimes we need to go. We need to be led by his spirit. Now, his, the scripture says that he said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. So he's going to shepherd you whether you leave or whether you stay. He will shepherd you, but you have to be willing to go out when he says, come follow me. Remember Jesus passed by his disciples. They didn't. They weren't following him at the time. And he said, come, follow me. And they left everything behind. They went and followed him. And I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like in an extreme way. And we've done it about three times. One time was very, very not traumatic. It was actually pretty crazy and exhilarating. But he said we had four days to pick up, pack up, and go out and leave things behind. And uh, it was just a new phase of ministry. It was amazing. And um, to what extreme we will follow him, are willing to follow him, you know, sort of like being a hind's feet in high places. What is a hind? It's like a goat, you know, those mountain goats, just willing to go. What across whatever terrain because you know that's where he's at that's where you want to be um, knowing that he causes us to be sure footed we're not going to fall even if we're on if we're like a goat on a sheer cliff we have the feet of hind's feet capable of following him in whatever kind of terrain he leads us into and so some hold back and some don't go, but the ones that trust him and know him and know their shepherd and have no fear, they will go with him in places unbelievable. So there's the king's highway, there's the highway, there's an acceptable way, there's the perfect way that we can choose. He knows what we are capable of, so he, he prepares us, but we have to be willing to let go of what we think is our stability and put our trust in him. So saying all that, provision of God. I loose the provision of God to come to you in Jesus' name. The Lord God is our provider. The provision is made, but sometimes Satan is hindering that provision. Sometimes he has a block in the road. It's a strong man. It's a hindering spirit. There's lots of hindering spirits that are out there hindering what God has already provided. He's provided healing, but there might be a hindering spirit. So if you're not receiving healing, it may be because of a hindering spirit. 
you may have a need that's not being met and it is a hindering spirit because God has already provided. You know, we don't know how to pray as we ought to pray, but if we think about it, why would we keep asking God for something he's already provided for us? The provision is made. Well, it's getting blocked up. It's getting hindered. It's getting held back. What's it get, what is holding it back? It's the enemy, the enemy of our souls, Satan. It's a demonic stronghold, the, the strong man. Remember the scripture that says that you can't break into a house when there's a strong man there unless you first bind the strong man. Then you can spoil his goods. Well, it, it's the same way turned around. If you're a strong man in Christ Jesus, Satan won't be able to come and spoil your goods. So your provision that's on its way is being hindered if it hasn't come to you. But what we're doing is we're crying, sweating, praying, getting angry, feeling like God has forgotten us, and getting into doubt and unbelief, listening to the enemy's lies because things haven't broken through, things haven't come through. But what we really need to realize is that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God made provision for you. And he said, I have given you power to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. So sometimes the provision isn't made because we're not praying against the enemy. We, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, powers, dominions, and mights, wickednesses in high places. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Jesus said, I have given you power to tread. And so we've got to take that power. He has put the sword into our hands. We have access to armor. We can seek him to get wisdom. So if you don't have something that you know you should have, or you've been praying and, you be, and you've said, I, well, I believe, but this isn't happening, then know that it's not because it hasn't been provided. It is because the enemy is holding it up somehow. He may be holding wisdom up, wisdom up from you. The provision has been made. So we've got to come against that thing that is hindering. So you can begin to pray, Lord, I come against hindering spirits right now in Jesus' name. I thank you that I have the full armor of God on. I think you have the sword of the Spirit. Having done all, I stand. I bind the enemy's works against me. I command the strong man that's holding up my goods, my provision to release right now everything that is supposed to be coming to me in Jesus' name. I thank you that you've given me power to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. You know, scorpions and serpents, they're crawlers. They're creepy crawlers. And they are crushed. They can be crushed under your feet. And so this is what that scripture means. He, can, he gives you power over all the power of the enemy to crush the work of the enemy because it's serpentine, taking the teeth out of the lion, the claws. So... He, Jesus, did that. He did that. And all we have to do is take authority and say, back off. You're not going to intimidate me. You're not going to take from me. You're not going to lie. The most effective weapon that the enemy has is to lie. He lies. And so he can lie you out of your healing. He can lie you out of your provision by saying, well, God hasn't said like he did with Eve. Oh, you! what makes you think he's going to provide for you? What makes you think that you can get healed? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so when Satan came to Jesus, Jesus combated him with the word. So when we get enough word in us, we can combat the enemy's lies. That's why it's so important to have God's word, have his promises and know them. And be proactive for what the Lord has provided for us. Because he has set a caravan to us of provision. But the enemy is blocking it at the pass. And all you have to say is, I command in Jesus' name. Because you know. You know it's coming. You have faith. You believe what the word says that God provides. And so you're not going to cry and fuss because you don't have it. 
you're going to get a holy indignation against the thing that's keeping you from having what God has provided. You might think, well, why don't God move it out of the way? Well, he wants you to know who you are in Christ. He wants you to know that you have authority to bind, to loose, to stand, to do battle with the word. Why would we have the word, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God? Why would we have our armor on and the, and the sword of the spirit and not do warfare with the word? It's our responsibility. We have to take responsibility. We have to believe the word of God, that he is a God of promise, and then we do warfare knowing that he's provided for us. He provided healing, deliverance, provision. It's all there. We just have to obtain it, walking in the authority that Christ has given us, the authority of the believer. Amen. So, right now in Jesus' name, we command sickness, disease, and poverty to be broken and the power of God to be loosed for healing, for deliverance, for provision, economic breakthrough in Jesus' name. So we talked about all kinds of healing today. We talked about healing. We talked about deliverance. We talked about economic breakthrough. Uh, we talked about faith. We talked about praying in the Holy Ghost and building up our most holy faith and reading the Word of God, hearing the Word of God, obeying the Lord and having uh, acts of faith. You know, when someone says, raise your hand and believe the Lord, go ahead and do it. Because you're just saying, I believe and I receive and I come into agreement with the prayer that's being released um, by faith, okay? And I want to say that the Lord your God in the midst of you is mighty. The Lord thy God in the midst of you is mighty. The Lord your God in the midst of you is mighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A lot of times we look over here, we look over there, but we have to realize if Christ is in us, then the Lord our God in the midst of us is mighty. He is mighty. He is mighty. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you dissolve all doubt and unbelief in Jesus' name, all demonic activity in Jesus' name that intimidates us, that torments us, that harasses us. We bind spirits of fear. We have not a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. In Jesus' name, bad dreams, I command, have to go. Demonic attacks during the night, I command, have to go. We break witchcraft. We break occultic practices that those that are listening might have been a part of in the past. We break the power of it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Those of you that are listening that have had encounters with the occult in the past and you haven't repented of it, I want you to put your hand on your forehead right now as an act of faith because you're ready. You're ready to receive complete and the full mind of Christ, the full presence of God in your life. Put your hand on your forehead and say, Yes, Lord, I desire to be completely and fully delivered from every kind of thing that hinders me. I renounce all occultic activity, things I know about and things I don't know about, things I remember and things I don't remember in every way, shape, or form that I have been a part of any kind of occultic activity, whatever it might be. I think you break the power of it. You break the bondage of it over my mind, over my soul and over my spirit. And I thank you that my dreams and my thought life will be completely and utterly free from every kind of dark thing, hindering thing, demonic thing, in Jesus' name. And I have not a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind, and I embrace the sound mind that I have in Christ Jesus. And I loose every kind of band of wickedness, every kind of thing that would hold me back. I think that I'm freed by the Spirit of God. I'm freed. I'm made free. 
whom Christ has made free is free indeed. And I receive that freedom in Jesus' name. Oh, I receive the freedom. Thank you for it. Thank you for it, Holy One. Holy One. Holy One. Thank you, Lord, that everything from the past is broken off those that are receiving their healing and their deliverance right now. I thank you, Lord. I loose angels to drive back darkness. Drive back darkness. Even that demonic entity that has laid claim on these people, on their lives. I thank you, Lord, that by your word, and I loose your word right now to go in the mighty name of Jesus to stand between that person, these individuals, that one, Lord God, and the bondage that they once walked in, that once tormented them, what once harassed them. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you for it, Lord. Now thank you for healing. Now thank you for restoration. Thank you, Father God, for the mind of Christ. I bind to them the mind of Christ and the spirit of discernment to discern between spirits, to know what is right and what is wrong, to know demons, what is a demon that acts like an angel. In Jesus' name, to know, Father, to know. A spirit of knowing right now. A spirit of knowing. Really being able to discern between that which is right, that which is wrong, the, that which is truth, and that which is lie. That they would love the truth and hate the lie, Father God, as they do, but even more so because they're, they're free. They've been loosed from the power of the enemy right now. Glory be to God. Go, glory. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. Now, Father, I pray for good dreams, dreams that come from heaven. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let them have good dreams. Let them have visions of the Lord. Let them have supernatural experiences that come from God but because they're citizens of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all of the rudiments, the sediments of this world is washed out of them. Now and forever, sealed in Jesus' name. Completed in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Made whole in the name of Jesus. Thank you for it, Father, right now, Lord God. Father God, I pray for those. It's like I, I see um, tattoos. So... And there's shame attached to that. It's, it's becoming more and more like there's shame attached to that. Father, I pray whatever they can do, whatever they need to do, be re delivered from that shame of this tattoo. I just see this like on the forearm, this one particular vision I'm having of a tattoo on the forearm that's visible. Can't really wear anything short sleeved without it being seen. It's something, it's um, what I'm seeing. And it, this can be uh, attached to, this can be speaking to a lot of different situations. You, can ha you might be, you have, might have a tattoo on your leg and you're, you're, there's shame attached to it because your life has changed. You've, um, you've just become more and more aware of maybe something that's vile about a tattoo that you have on your body okay well um so it could be anywhere you could believe this for anywhere in any way shape or form but i i particular i particularly so i specifically am seeing a mark on the right hand right arm forearm right now and father i command that thing to dissolve supernaturally to dissolve and fade I thank you that you provide a way. You make a way for it to go away. In Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Hallelujah. Thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name. I want to say, make provision for that thing to be removed. But I feel an anointing and faith that it will dissolve. But I thank you, Lord. 
Thank you for it, that it's dissolving in the name of Yeshua right now. It has to go. It has to go. It has to go in Jesus' name. Just go. Just be rid of it. Just go. Glory be to God. The consciousness of it. Lord, however you want to do this, however you want to do this, I'm not going to limit you. The awareness of it, the condemnation, even, Lord, however you want to do it, the cleansing of the mind and the awareness of it, the washing it out of the skin, how you want to do it, Lord. How you want to do it, how you can do it, in all the ways you can. Whatever it takes, what money it might take, God, what, what provision it takes, I thank you, Lord. These issues will be dissolved. They'll be washed out. They'll be cleansed. From the mind, even the trauma of the mind, constantly thinking about a mark on your body. This might be a physical mark. This may be someone that is missing a limb. It may be a, a scar. Whatever that is, reach out and grab it. Re reach out and grab the residual of this specific word. When I say that, I mean there are maybe other things that you might think of. I said, well, <clears throat> on the right hand or on the right arm was a, a bark, but you, you might have thought immediately about a scar on your cheek. So just put your fingers over that place, over that scar on the cheek, over that, that um, tattoo on your forearm. Just put your hand on it if you can. If you can't, don't worry about it. But just as an act of faith, just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. First and foremost, you wash me with the water of your word. That You cleanse me and you dissolve all stains from off of my mind and off of my soul and off of my spirit right now. I receive that. I receive it. I receive it, Lord. Healing from trauma. Healing from war trauma. Lord God. War memories. Healing from um, post-traumatic stress disorder. I think I said that right. Trauma. It doesn't have to be war trauma. It can be all kinds of different kinds of trauma. It can be sexual abuse. It can be um, being in a house fire. Uh, being in an earthquake. Something happened to you. It was traumatic. Okay? And the fear of it comes and goes. Things trigger it. It's too much for you. It's overwhelming. You have to take pills. I'm declaring the decree in, in Jesus' name, that you be delivered from that trauma by the power of that name, Yeshua, the Son of the living God, the God who saves. Why did I say Yeshua? It means the God who saves. He will rescue you, deliver you from that trauma. I command it right now. And all the fear and all the memory associated with it has to go. I command it to be broken off your mind, your, your soul, and even body, uh, physical memory of pain in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Lord. Nothing is too difficult for you. Nothing is too hard for you. Thank you for dissolving, Father, everything we're talking about right now. Hallelujah. But the stain of it off of the mind, the stain of it, the impact Glory be to God is dissolving, dissolving, dissolving. You're not going to be aware of it anymore. You're going to stop thinking about it. It's going to be over. You're going to get over it in Jesus' name. Over it, over it, just over it. Get over it. Glory be to God, I declare right now an over it <laughs> breakthrough. Uh, just a get over it breakthrough. Get over it breakthrough. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, mighty God, hallelujah, mighty King, mighty King, mighty God. Get over it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The shame, the shame has to go now and forever. It has to go. It has to go. You had a bad experience. You were in the wrong place. At the wrong time with the wrong people and they abused you they hurt you 
Maybe it was mental. Maybe it was physical. It could have been spiritual. I'm telling you right now, by the power of that name, Yeshua, the Son of the living God, who comes to save. The Lord is dissolving the memory, the demonic impact, satanic connections, evil spirits that torment you and torture you. You have not a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. Again, put your mind at, well, put your mind at rest, but put your hand on your head and say, Lord, I receive that completely, entirely, and fully. I say yes to you. Thank you, Lord. I would not be putting my hand on my head right now if I didn't believe what I was hearing right now, knowing it was from me. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Jesus. Jesus. Right now. Now put your hand on your heart, where your heart is. Say, Father, heal my broken heart. Thank you that you do. Thank you that you did. Thank you, Lord, that you made me whole. I receive. I receive. Oh, I thank you, Father. Just thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just say, Lord, thank you. I receive it. I receive it all in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. But you're going to have peace. You're going to have peace. Your sins have been forgiven. The Lord has forgiven you of your sins. And you put your hand in your heart and say, Lord, I just want that knowing, that peace once and for all. I receive the peace that I have now available to me, that I'm reminded of right now. In Jesus' name, what you did for me, Lord, on the cross, though my sins be as scarlet red, you have washed me and made me, cleansed me, and I am like white snow. I have a new garment. I have the mind of Christ. I'm being renewed. I'm a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things become new. Glory be to God. I am free from the past. In Jesus' name, you say, Lord, I'm free from the past, and I thank you for it. I think the old man is dead and buried. Have you ever been baptized in the water to follow the Lord's leading in, the, in water baptism? If you've never had that experience, ask the Lord to provide for you the water baptism. But remember, John said, I baptize in water. But there's one that comes after me that will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and with fire. So there's the water baptism, there's spirit baptism, there's fire baptism. Now the fire baptism is when the Lord begins to perfect us. This comes by trials. It, it comes by opportunities to trust God. And those things that are in us that are deep in us, because the heart is exceedingly wicked, that comes to the surface. You know, I'm not trying to bring you back into condemnation. I'm just saying that he deals with us layer by layer by layer. He's very patient. He loves us so much. And as one layer is dealt with, then the other layer, he works on it. Just kind of like a file system. If you've ever seen those old-fashioned file systems that they pull out in the dusty warehouse and going through the file system and pulling out certain things. And, and this is what the Lord wants to do with us. Even the older folks that have gone through so much, gone through so much in their life. Maybe you've received the Lord late in life, and so there's been some carnage left behind. Um, maybe there's been drug use. There's been loss of children. There's been um, broken families. There's been relationships just completely destroyed. There may be prison time, jail time that you've experienced. And so you have all these things that we've been praying and we just prayed about and God's been and it's healing you and you're made whole. And uh, he, But he's going to work on your character. 
He's going. He's washing out all the memory of all the trauma, and then now you know the character issues. Some of the character issues. You know those things that you know about yourself that you just sometimes maybe it drives people away, or maybe you drive yourself away, or or, or these character issues. You know you, you get caught up in maybe lies or gossiping. Um, spreading junk and spread, instead of spreading the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, using your tongue for other things besides praising God, but maybe, you know, kind of being destructive. And it's kind of a stronghold of your life. The Lord is going to purge those things out of you. So you just, when you do it, just ask forgiveness. You're faithful to confess your sin. He is faithful and just forgive you of all your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So when these things happen, you just say, Lord, I'm sorry. I know I got caught up in gossip the other day. Spread some rumors I shouldn't have said. You know, said things I shouldn't have said. I just want to put my tongue on the altar. And you just keep doing that until you get completely delivered from the sins of the tongue. Okay? Just trusting in Him. It's a daily walk. Just a closer walk with thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty King. I use Old English because I've read the King. I've learned a lot of the scriptures out of the King James. And uh, some of the old songs had the these and the thous in it. And uh, so that's why I do it. Because I learned. I broke my teeth on the. I broke my teeth. I cut my teeth. I'd have broke my teeth too, but I cut my teeth on the King James Version. And um, so that's why I use that old English sometimes because that's how I remembered the scriptures or some of the songs in the past. But it's a daily walk with him. It's a daily walk. It's a new day. That's why we take the daily bread. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. We take up the bread every day. We break bread every day because it's a basic sustenance as water is. So we eat the bread of life every day. We drink the water of the word and that, that sustains us mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And physically. There's been times when I've been so into the word of God that I've forgotten to eat and uh, felt the, ener the energy, felt the energy of as if I had eaten. Jesus said, I do, my meat is to do my father's will, to do the work of my father. That's the meat. And a lot of times when you're caught up in spiritual work, you can forget to eat because your meat is doing the will of your father. I'm not talking about, you know, starving yourself. I'm talking about how fulfilling the Word of God can be, the work of the Lord can be, being in the presence, being in, in the Lord. We've got to take care of our physical bodies. We absolutely do. Um, but He sustains us. He alone, the Scripture says, He alone sustains us. He can alone sustain us. We can put our trust in Him to sustain us in times when there is lack. He sustains us. He provides. He makes a way. Somehow, some way. Even if it has to be a supernatural strengthening of the Spirit, He does that. There's nothing impossible with God. In every circumstance that you find yourself in in life, a prisoner of war, President of the United States, <laughs> God will give us all we need to do what position we're in in life. He will, he has, and he does. Amen. Glory be to God. I want to pray for bones. I want to pray for bones. In the name of Jesus, the structure, the walls, Lord, in Jesus' name, that which from where our strength comes is, of course, through you, Lord. But that strength has to flow into a structure. 
And so, Lord, I speak to the structure that that structure will be able to receive the strengthening of the Lord. Lord, the, the marrow and the bone. Hallelujah. Lord, strengthening, healing, the marrow and the bone, healing. Any kind of skeletal uh, disabilities, diseases, in the name of Jesus, healing in the marrow, the very core of our being physically, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, but physically right now in Jesus' name strength. If we take up any deadly thing, it shall not hurt us. Lord, again, I'm, I'm reminded of um, war injuries. And I pray, Father God, all war injuries, completely, totally, that which is known and that which is not known in the name of Jesus, pass through them a supernatural strengthening and a healing, a deliverance, Father God, from every kind of infirmity, every kind of sickness, every kind of disease, I loose it right now. I loose it right now. Healing right now. Healing in his wings. Glory be to God. Healing in his wings. Father, right now in Jesus' name, I pray for the teeth. Father God, so many people, Lord, that have struggled financially, so many people that have struggled in their life, there's, there's uh, dental problems, Father God, in Jesus' name. I pray for dental healing right now. I pray for them, Lord. Every cavity be filled. Lord, you did this to, for me years ago. Had a couple cab, cavities filled. My pastor had uh, his cavity filled in the shape of a cross. It was a supernatural uh, miracle of God. A... Um, healing a uh, creative miracle and I I'm not going to hold you back I'm, I'm going to speak a creative miracle it's not me it's you Lord in every way possible in the name of Jesus I just speak to these dental problems I loose the power of God I loose the healing and the miraculous I loose the miracles Miracle working power of God right now. Right now. Restoration. Just restoration for those that have been weathered, for those that have gone through storms. Restoration. Healing. Ministry. Peace. Power. Strength. Joy. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name, mighty King, mighty God. Who? thank you, Lord, hallelujah, glory. Shandala makita la maria seya, lo ramane miyashu ale, rama kingdom ye la li la rosanda, me lo koroshnana, he la rosa. You are holy, O oh God. You are mighty. You are holy. You are awesome. Hey. Glory, honor, power, and majesty. Hey. Glory, honor, power, and majesty. Hey, ya. Hey, ya. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Glory, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want you to lift up your hand once again, like we did earlier in this podcast. And one more time, just wave it before the Lord and allow Him to touch you. Thank you, Father. Just allow Him to say, Yes, Lord, I want more, I want everything spoken today and everything you still have I receive it right now thank you for it Lord God in the name of Jesus 
Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, that I might see you better. Open the eyes of my spirit, Lord. Open up the eyes of my heart, Father, that I can see you better. In Jesus' name, help me not have itchy ears needing to be scratched by false teachings, false doctrine. Lord, cleanse me from false desires that would lead me towards false doctrine and false teaching. Thank you, Lord. Put a healthy appetite in me, Lord. I thank you. We prayed for discernment, so I thank you, Lord. They will have discernment. We will have discernment. And they'll go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you and the trees will clap their hands. As the mountains are around Jerusalem, so the Lord is around his people. As Mount Zion is in the midst of Jerusalem, so is the Lord is in the midst of his people. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. There goes my King James again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mighty King, mighty God. Holy One, worthy. Fill them up full. Fill them up full now. The Lord says desire spiritual gifts, but mostly desire that you might prophesy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, mighty King. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So now again, as we talked about before, as an act of faith, because you're going to come into agreement with what we're going to talk about here in a minute, which has to do with the gifts of the Spirit, the oracle, the, the um, what am I trying to say? The speaking gifts. Hallelujah. So we're going to talk about the speaking gifts. So put your finger right there on your lips. Lord, take the coals. Cleanse my lips from all uncleanliness. Every unclean thing, every unclean word. Take the coal, cleanse my lips. I make myself available to you right now. Lord God, I, as I prayed before, my tongue, I lay it at the altar. Let me, Lord, be. Let me be one that can speak your word with clarity in Jesus name I receive all that you have for me thank you Lord thank you Lord that's what we would say thank you Lord thank you Lord and I thank you for utterances that come forth from those that desire Father to share your gospel, to speak your word with clarity and truth. Thank you that the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us into all truth. Thank you, Lord. You might say, well, I do prophesy. God's given me that gift. Well, I'm going to pray for you that the Lord will expand that gift in the mighty name of Jesus. He will expand it. Hallelujah. Expanding that gift right now. Glory be to God, glory be to God, glory be to God. Expanding the gift of the word of prophecy. Thank you, Jesus. Expanding the gift of the word of prophecy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Being more fluent in your prayer language and diverse kinds of tongues and the gift of Ministry gift of tongues, an interpretation of tongues, and the gift of prophecy, the word of prophecy, teaching, ministry. Father, that those who have not walked in that, you will begin to set the preliminaries that you will that you will uh, 
line them up, Father God, bringing an alignment in their life that they might be able to learn how to enter into these things, Father God. And those that have been more fluently, Father God, in Jesus' name, fluently, Father, um, expanding it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I just heard something a little bit where I just heard, I'll just say what I heard, making merchandise. Making merchandise of these gifts. Making money. Now, I'm talking about a different kind of thing here. So, making merchandise of these gifts. Freely, I'm going to say this, freely you have been given. Freely give. Don't hold your gifts back. Don't hold your gifts back. Freely you have received, freely give. You have received freely, freely give. Now, I don't know what that's speaking to. I don't know what the circumstances are, but the one that's going to hear this, and it might be a week from now, it might be a year from now, it might be three years from now. Whoever hears this, that this is speaking to right now, freely you have received, freely give. You know what the Spirit of God is talking about. You've been involved in ministry. You've been under some teaching that has said that has said you don't give it cheap something like that I'm not sure but the spirit of God knows and he's putting his finger on it right now freely you have received freely give not to make merchandise of the gift of God. He led captivity. Jesus led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. That's what a gift is. You have a gift. You give the gift. You, you give the gift. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty, mighty King. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. Add justice in your life. Add justice adjust it in your life so that you can go on without displeasing the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Let it be done. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty King. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. This is a rehaul. This is an overhaul. This is you taking out and, and reaching out and grabbing everything that you can. This is your opportunity to be prayed over. Okay, so you're not in a group. You're not in a church. Maybe you haven't been able to be around a church. Maybe you can't find one. You just wanted to be prayed over. Let me tell you, I know what that feels like. Just a drought of having accessibility. Um... For whatever reason, maybe because you're in a group of people that just don't pray. I don't know. I mean, or you just can't get to that place, whatever. I mean, wherever you're at, you might have to stay in your house. <laughs> you might have a something around your ankle <laughs> that makes you have to stay there and whatever. But God sees you and he knows where you're at he knows who you are whether you're a man of God woman of God whether you are just learning being discipled whoever you are God knows he knows your need and you can reach out and receive everything that he has for you today just say yes Lord yes Lord remember we were talking about earlier just little acts of faith 
when I say lift up your hands and receive this, if you didn't believe that lifting up your hand was going to cause you to read something, you would never do it. But because you do lift up your hand, it's an act of faith. It's, it causes something to happen inside of you and it's uh, electrifying in the spirit because without faith we cannot please God and the just shall live by faith not by sight glory be to God so you know the, all these things they may not show up in a tangible way right now but they're going to they have they are and they will <laughs> Thank you, Father. Well, I wanted to minister to you in this way. If you want to go to newwinepouring.com with one W, and at the top of any one of the pages you come to is a contact us link that if you click on that, it will take you to a correspondence page where you will be able to correspond with me, and I would love to hear from you. So if you have any questions, any comments you want to share, um, how the Lord has ministered to you by listening to this podcast, Make sure that you uh, let me know. As I receive them, I will pray special prayers over them, okay? So make sure that you send that in and uh, share whatever testimony, share what God's done for you. And uh, like I said, I will pray over your prayer request, um, even, even if it's just your sharing. I'll just pray over that. So that'll just be an added bonus. Um, also... It's very important now what I'm about to say. I want you to, if you've been ministered to by this podcast, if it's ministered to you, okay? A lot of people go to bed at night. They'll turn on a podcast to listen to just before they go to bed. And this is one of those kind of podcasts that would really be a blessing for someone uh, to listen to after the day or in the beginning of the day, whenever. But I mean, so if this has blessed you, Please share it because if it has touched your life, then it's going to touch someone else's life. And when you share something that has touched your life and ministered to you and changed things for you, and then you give it to someone else and that begins to change them, you become a uh, co-laborer with that podcast, with that ministry, with God, the Father. It's about... His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So if you get touched and God ministers to you and you share what he's done for you, then you partake in that ministry. You partake in that harvest. It's just like if you were giving into a ministry and you become a part of it. It's the same thing. You will get your reward in heaven. God will bless you for making these kind of things available to others. And uh, because you didn't have to pay for this, you didn't have to uh, download it and pay a fee or go to a conference and, and give money or anything like that, but just because you turned it on and you listened to it freely, he has given, freely we've received. So you give freely what God has ministered to you with and he will cause you to be blessed because of it. It will actually seal everything in every way, shape, or form that he has ministered to you today. It will actually seal all of that ministry and multiply it. Okay? So, thank you for joining me today. And I look forward to doing this again and hearing from you. So, until we meet again, God bless. Welcome to Remnant Nation Radio and NewWinePouring.com. Remnant Nation Radio is a prophetic and poetic view of the sojourning bride of Christ in the world today.